Hello and welcome to CIS 399 Topics in Information Systems. My name is Dr. Vlad Krotov. I'm an Associate Professor of Information Systems at Murray State University and I'll be your instructor for this course. The two main goals for this video is to introduce you briefly to the subject matter of this course and also to help you get started with this course on Canvas. Now, before I say anything else, I would like to say the following. This video is not meant to be a replacement for the course syllabus. You still need to read the syllabus. In fact, I highly recommend that you read every section of the syllabus carefully so that you know all the rules, policies, and expectations in relation to this course. So once again, this video is just to briefly tell you what this course is about and also to help you get started with this course in Canvas. So let me talk briefly about the subject matter of this course. So this course is devoted to various topics under the broad umbrella of computer information systems. As you probably know by now, computer information systems is a very broad field. As a CS major, you're equipped with a variety of skills related to business, data, and technology. Also, our CIS program, just like most other CIS and MIS programs, emphasize the importance of developing soft skills among students and IT professionals. Those soft skills include abilities like communication, leadership, teamwork, as well as qualities related to personal integrity and the general well awareness of the legal environment surrounding information systems. Now, since you're exposed to various technical uh, business and data components of information systems throughout your coursework, this course will primarily focus on the development of soft skills related to leadership, teamwork, and communication. The most important goal for this course is twofold. Number one, as a result of this course, I want everybody to identify a particular area under the umbrella of CIS or the broader umbrella of IT that you are passionate about and for which you have the necessary skills or capabilities. So in other words, I want you to decide what do you want to be after you graduate, okay? That's number one. And number two, not only I want you to decide what you would like to be five years from now, I also want you to develop a plan, a personal development plan that will outline both technical and non-technical development items that you need to go through in order for you to, to transition from your current state as a CIS student to your future desired state as a CIS or IT professional. So, so these, these two components are, are, are comprise the most important goal for this course as I see it. So this was a brief introduction to the subject matter of this course. Now let me talk briefly about the pedagogy about this course and how this pedagogy is reflected in Canvas. So if you open our course, homepage, you will see something that looks like this, okay? Uh, some items uh, some items may differ from what you actually see because this course hasn't been published yet. Once I publish this course, you will see some additional items, such as announcements. So I always put my announcements here at the top of the page. Now, I know that nowadays students are bombarded with all kinds of emails, announcements, social media notification to the point where they don't read them. Now, please read my announcements because my announcements are not spam. They are very important. So this is how I work with announcements in this course. Uh, every week, usually on Monday or most of the time on Monday, I create an agenda announcement. So basically, I'm telling you what's coming up for the, for the upcoming week, what items you need to complete, whether there's an exam coming up, whether, they, whether you need to submit something. So I create an agenda. And then if something happens between... Uh, this Monday, next Monday, I will also make an announcement. For example, if there's an important change to the course and let's say uh, an important deadline has changed, then I will also announce that. So please read my announcements. I promise I'm not going to send you something that is not important. I will only send you information that is important. So please don't skip my announcements. Also, right now you don't see any announcements because I haven't posted any. This course hasn't, pub hasn't been published yet. Um, also, at the very top of the page, you have course Q&A, uh, general uh, questions related to the course that you can post using this discussion thread. Uh, you're free to respond to questions from your students if you know the answer. Uh, if it's something course related, make sure it goes into this discussion thread so that other students can see our exchange and maybe benefit from it as well. Okay? 
If it's something not related to the course, it's something, let's say, related to a personal issue, something that you don't want others to see, then please use the inbox feature in Canvas to send me a private email. Please don't use my uh, MSU email uh, uh, for, for sending those inquiries because I want all of my course-related correspondence to be in one place, which is Canvas. Now, if, if both methods of communication have failed, let's say you couldn't reach me uh, through this discussion thread and you send me an, an email through Canvas inbox feature and you haven't received, received anything within two days, then please send me an email to my Murray State uh, email address. It's mentioned here in the syllabus and uh, I, will, I, will, I will try to get back to you. So maybe something happened from a technical standpoint or I'm just not available. But usually those two will work. If it's something general that you don't mind others to seeing, then post it here. If it's something personal, then send me an email through the inbox feature of Canvas, okay? So this is where our uh, course Q&A discussion thread is pinned. It's also available here at the end of this module. Uh, also, as you know, if you click on uh, modules, you will also see this discussion thread listed right here, okay? Okay, now overall, the, the organization of this course is very linear. Uh, you just start at the top and you proceed to the very bottom until you complete everything, including the final exam, one item at a time. So you're here right now, you're watching this intro video, which is, uh, you know, this is where you're supposed to start. Uh, the first thing I would like you to do, I want you to read the syllabus. It's a very important document. It outlines important policies. Um, there have been a, a number of policies added, policies added in relation to the COVID-19 situation. So it's mentioned all there. So please read those uh, rules and policies. I guess one of the most important rules is that for if you're if you are a face-to-face -face student, if you're attending this class or any other classes face-to-face, -face, you need to wear a mask all the time, unless you have a medical condition that prevents you from from wearing that mask, and that has to be cleared by the medical office. And all those things are discussed in, in detail in the syllabus. Uh, speaking about online versus face-to-face, -face, uh, this is a combined online and face-to-face -face section, which means that we have some students who are taking this course face-to-face. Uh, -face. We have some students who are taking this course online. You all combine into one group, you know, as far as Canvas is concerned. I did this on purpose because I want uh, online and face-to-face -face students to have some degree of interaction uh, within Canvas, uh, mostly through discussion threads. So um, also, again, as the, as the COVID-19 syllabus situations, uh, uh, syllabus additions outline, there may be situations where somebody is not feeling well and that person wants to stay at home, then you will, uh, I guess, temporarily transition from a face-to-face -face student to online student. And that shouldn't make any difference because everything is the same. Everything is one place. You have the same deadlines, the same materials, the same discussion threads. The only difference between online and face-to-face -face is that for face-to-face uh, -face students, I will deliver uh, uh, lectures face-to-face. -face. Now, for online students, all those lectures will be recorded and pre-recorded and available to you through YouTube. Okay, you decide whatever works for you, and, and obviously, if, if you're a face-to-face -face student, you can always rewatch those lectures. They all they're all the same. So, read the syllabus first. Uh, you will see some additional information about the course, about communication patterns. You know, there you will also see my Zoom office hours. You know, I'm available through Zoom. Uh, I have a Zoom meeting room, so you can see uh, when I'm available if you would like to have like a face-to-face real-time discussion with me. Um, if you're not familiar with Respondus Lockdown Browser software, uh, please uh, watch the following introduction. Most people are familiar because I think uh, by, this, by the time you take this course, you already took several courses that, that use this feature for uh, protecting quizzes and exams. Uh, here, I'm using this feature to administer exams. However, the first quiz that you will take, which is uh, uh, introduction to the course quiz, will also have those security features. It will require Respondus Lockdown Browser and a working webcam. This is done, this is not a high stakes quiz. I just want you to be prepared for, for, for this technology from day one. So when you take this quiz and if you don't have Respondus Lockdown Browser, the system will say something like, you, you need to have Respondus Lockdown Browser to take this quiz, download it here. Don't try to download it on your own by Googling because it has to do with MSU license. You have to download it with the link provided by Canvas, okay? Uh, also, you need to have a working webcam so that you, you're monitored by the system as you take this quiz. Before the quiz starts, it will ask you to go through certain security procedures using the webcam. It will ask you to take the webcam and show you surrounding. It will ask you to show your ID to the web camera. 
It can be any valid ID, uh, preferably MSU student ID or maybe driver's license. So you will practice going through all those security procedures. Uh, also, uh, also the first quiz, uh, just like uh, the, the exams, uh, uh, is timed and you only have one attempt. For all, the, all other quizzes, you have two attempts and they're not timed. So you can take it once and you can see what kind of score you got and then you can go back and retake this quiz to improve your grade. So my quizzes are mostly uh, for self-assessment, for keeping track of your progress, for practicing before you take an actual exam. So, so, uh, so th those are the things that I meant to say about Respondus Lockdown Browser. Also take a look at our online discussion, uh, discussions grading rubric. Uh, we have quite a few online discussions in this course, approximately 20. So you will have to, uh, you will have, you know, typically when I post an online discussion assignment, I ask you to do two things. Number one, you need to post your own response to the question formulated or to the task, uh, to the uh, uh, assignment formulated. And then you need to respond to other people in a meaningful way. What I mean by meaningful way, I don't want to give you specific instructions on how to respond. It's up to you. But it has to be something meaningful in a sense that you cannot just say, yes, I agree or tell me more or I disagree. You need to somehow approach other people's responses critically, not necessarily in a negative sense, but maybe help them develop their idea further, give them useful recommendations or suggestions. But it has to be something meaningful, something beyond simple agreement or disagreement. So please take a look at the rubric. I will use this rubric for grading all of your online discussion assignments. Uh, also, you can read my bio. Uh, of course, uh, there won't be any uh, exam questions related to my bio. I will not ask you in, in what year I graduated from the University of Houston or things like that. As long as you remember my name, Dr. Vlad Krotov, I can go by Dr. Vlad in this course, you should be fine. You don't have to remember anything. So after you go through those materials, you need to take the quiz to show me that you understand uh, the, the material up to this point. Mostly questions will come from, uh, will come from the syllabus. So they'll be related to, to, the, uh, uh, mater to the rules and policies outlined in the syllabus. So you'll take this quiz using a lockdown response, uh, Respondus Lockdown Browser and a working webcam. After that, and this is a graded quiz already, I'm asking you to introduce yourself. So introduce yourself by posting your photo. That this is optional. Um, the reason I'm asking for your photo is that one of the learning goals of this class is to make sure that CS students know each other or maybe CS students know everybody in the class, even if somebody is not a CS student. Um, you don't have to post your photo if you're not comfortable with this, but if you post your photo, uh, you'll, get, you'll get some bonus points. And overall, you get some bonus points if you post insightful comments to a discussion, uh, responses to a discussion question, or provide insightful responses to, to other people's posts. So for this assignment, I'll give you two bonus points if you post your photo so that people can recognize you by your face, you know, without your mask. And also you'll get five extra points if you create a video introduction, if you record like a brief video uh, touching on, on the following points, your name, where you're from, your professional experience, your career aspirations, your hobbies, and anything else you feel is important for others to know about you. So again, this, this assignment has two components. Cre create your own post and then respond to others. Maybe greet people in a meaningful way. Do not just say hello, that's it, you know, because you won't get much points for that. So after you introduce and greet others, I suggest you join our CS group on LinkedIn. You know, this is where we post a lot of announcements related to the CS program, especially announcements related to uh, informal uh, aspects of the program, like various events. Um, uh, for example, what we do, uh, we advertise our AATP events, Association of Information Technology Professional Student Club events. And this is another thing that, that I recommend. If you would like to get involved with AATP this semester or in general, please join our Slack communication channel. So this is where we set the agenda, we communicate about future events. There'll be opportunities to uh, earn some bonus points if you attend some professional development events organized by AATP. Also in your personal development plan, I will ask you to outline a certain informal uh, professional development mechanism where you join an organization or, or join some kind of club where you practice your, your communication skills, your people skills, your leadership skills. So that would be a great avenue to fulfill uh, uh, some aspects of your personal development plan. And then if you have any questions about the course, you can post them here. You know, this is the same discussion thread I just discussed. And after that, you just go... Uh, uh, mod, one module uh, one module per week, one item at a time within module. So I'll go through the first 
couple of modules just to give you a better sense of how to proceed with this course. <clears throat> and, and this will be like a very, you know, we'll, we'll break pace once in a while, I'll ask you to do something different, but this will be like a typical flow uh, of the course. So for next week, I will ask you to watch a video that I created. Um, so here I'm trying to explain what CIS is, uh, is as a field. I'm using only one slide or diagram for this video, so you can download it here. After you watch the, the video, you will take this quiz to show me that you understand what CIS uh, is all about as a field, as a profession, as a major. Uh, this quiz is not timed and you have two attempts for it. After that, you move to another video. You watch my video presentation on CIS versus other fields, how CIS is different from computer science, cybersecurity, uh, data science. Again, you take, take this quiz to show me that you understand the information in this video. After that, I'm asking you to discuss uh, uh, material mostly related to the second video. Why did you choose CS as you major? Just give a good explanation and then respond to other people's responses. After that, I'm asking you to watch a video on typical CIS roles or jobs that CIS students take upon graduation. Again, this is the slide or visualization that I'm using. After that, you will take the quiz and then you will tell, you will share with others where you see yourself professionally five years from now and then again respond to others. So this is second module. In the third module, I will introduce you to the uh, broad topic of information systems. You know, as you can tell from the name, information systems is a central concept to the field of computer information systems. So this is my video lecture. My face-to-face -face students, you will have to watch this lecture on information systems uh, in person. Uh, online students will watch this lecture in pre-recorded format from YouTube. Uh, both students can revisit this lecture by opening uh, this lecture on YouTube using this link. Here I have slides that I'm using for this lecture. After you watch this lecture, you take the quiz to show me that you understand what this lecture is about. Then I'm asking you to read the following article. This is my article from Business Horizon. It describes Internet of Things as a socio-technical phenomena. And then I'm asking you the following. So now that you know what Internet of Things is all about, create an idea for an I IoT product, but don't discuss it in a narrow way. Make sure you discuss it in, from a socio-technical perspective. In other words, if you have uh, idea for the following product, let's say uh, IoT-based attendance system for students, then discuss the technology, what kind of hardware, software you will use, and also discuss the, the social side of your product. For example, will, will your product be compliant with existing privacy standards? Uh, who will be your clients? Um, you know, what kind of industry groups you, you, you will end up collaborating to promote this product, things like that. So adopt this broad socio-technical perspective when you discuss your ideas and also critique other people's ideas after they post them. So, so those are the first three modules that I posted. Uh, I'm still working on the remaining modules. I promise that in this class, I will be like at least uh, two weeks ahead of time. In other words, if I give you something, if I post something with the deadline, you'll have at least two weeks to complete it, okay? Uh, I also hope that you will regularly keep up uh, with the course by logging into Canvas and, and checking what items are coming up. Also, please make sure you check my announcements. Uh, I will only post something when it's very important. So once again, I would like to welcome, welcome you to this course and I hope you have a great and healthy semester with us. Thank you.